Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. Remember, for all things Nintendo Switch, consider sticking around. Today we're going to look at the game Star Renegades that comes from the same developer as Halcyon on the Nintendo Switch, which was a great game that Glenn reviewed. I'll pop a link to that one down in the description. But this time round, we've got a turn-based tactical roguelite title with the tagline Resist, Reclaim, Survive, Repeat. But is this just a repeat? Of all the other roguelite titles we've got on Switch, or have Massive Damage done it again? Well, let's find out. The story commences where one world ends. As you're introduced to a few of the cast and the robot, Justin, or J5T1N, who after the collapse of his world, crushed under the heel of a new oppressor, has been sent along to the next dimension to warn them of this threat that will soon wash up on their shores. You'll then take on a band of heroes who aim to defeat this evil. However, where the roguelite element comes in is that if you fail, well then you send the robot onto the next dimension and yeah, it all begins again. In terms of gameplay and controls, well there are a few nice aspects here. You can control your character with the left stick on this main world area, and you'll only see this once you first perish. From here you can then spend any accumulated credits or wealth you've gained to permanently upgrade your party. You'll also unlock new characters from this area, and it's from this hub that you'll always return upon your demise. Straight off the bat, it's a roguelite title whereby you're not overly punished for your death, and you're given quite a lot of rewards in the way of permanent upgrades. When you venture out, you'll be heading to new planets, and each one has a series of tougher enemies and a main behemoth, namely a much more powerful one, that will require all your tactical abilities to overcome. There are a number of different difficulty modes, from easy to normal, and then the hard and hardest difficulties net you a 25 and 50% gain in all of your XP and items. When you enter a new planet, there are a few interesting mechanics at play. It's segmented, almost like a board game, and your robot can unlock three of the gates, allowing you to move into new sections. Once you've unlocked three different gates, hopefully without perishing and looting all the different areas, You'll then have to camp. When camping, the game takes on more of a card-based mechanic, where any cards that you've collected through combat or looting in the area can then be used to build up the synergies between your party. It's a very cool system, and as their bonds grow, you'll unlock new dialogue trees and even unique abilities. The main meat of the game comes in the form of the combat, which has some really interesting mechanics. First and foremost, there's the timeline at the top of the screen. This shows the order of attacks, but in a departure from the usual format, certain abilities and moves that you use can knock back the enemies. If you can knock them right off the back of the timeline, it causes a break. which then interrupts their turn. There are other things that you can do using skills such as stagger and slow, as well as concentrating on their armor and removed allows you to attack the health. What's really interesting is that the different attacks that you do, ranging from light, medium, and heavy, will have a number of abilities that activate only when they're critical hits. These can only be achieved when you've got the enemy exactly where you want them and knock them off the back of the area. You'll also notice that these different attacks place you further along that timeline. So sometimes if the enemy is about to attack, as indicated here, you'll have to weigh up whether or not it's worth using a more powerful attack and allowing the enemy to hit you first, or try and knock them back, but they become immune to this, or perhaps use one of your special abilities, which get powered up via this resource shown over here. It's a really intricate system, and it only gets more in depth the further you go on. While initially showing you all of the skills available in a tutorial-like segment, it's then stripped back and simplified and gradually builds up as you discover and build up your party. You have a set number of days before you have to reach the end of a stage, which means that your decisions in terms of the areas you unlock are really important. Initially, I wasn't overly convinced about this mechanic as it felt a little arbitrary, but it soon forced me into making tactical decisions such as using two of my three unlocks to reach an area where I could recharge my characters and heal up, and then saving that final one to reach the boss area. The planets and missions themselves do have a touch of random generation in terms of the layouts of the levels and what falls where, and there's an element of RNG to the game. There's no two ways about it. You'll reach some bosses that are ludicrously difficult and seemingly impossible to beat no matter how well you play, and that's one aspect of roguelite titles that can be a real downfall. If you're aware going in that this is an aspect of the game, then I think you'll be okay, 
but I always find it a slightly cheap mechanic, seemingly to prolong the length of a game. One of the coolest aspects of the game, and one that's quite difficult to show, are the emergent events that take place on each playthrough. You might play through four times and experience four completely different events and they all feel quite natural, but the standout and star of the show has to be that reactive time-based battle system. It's certainly a lot more interesting and unique than the old school turn-based systems. If you're happy to push past a little bit of frustration that comes from the RNG factors until you're strong enough where that doesn't become so much of an issue, then I think there's a lot to enjoy here. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20. As far as controls go, well it's pretty decent. You can switch to an overview camera allowing you to pan over the level and this is essential for working out the exact route you're going to take with the area unlocks you've got left for that day. Control score 16 out of 20. Visuals and performance are a mixed bag. On the one hand I really like the striking visual art style they've gone for. It's somewhere between Octopath Traveler and their last game. It looks to combine some 3D lighting effects with some 2D visuals and on one hand there are areas that look stark and striking and really quite lovely and on the other, it can be quite difficult at times to see what's going on as they lose the contrast and things blend together. And especially on the overworld map, there are times when it's difficult to accurately see everything on the screen. Performance isn't terrible, it's just not perfect. I was expecting 60 FPS and a very responsive game, but it feels like there's a bit of input lag to all of your actions. I can't tell entirely if this is a design choice, but regardless, I didn't particularly like it and it felt like a bump to 60 and reducing that input latency or delay that they've applied to the movement would benefit the overall experience. Music and sound design are excellent. But again, I felt like some of the tracks were repeated far too often and with a couple of audio loops that are small enough to potentially become an irritation. I really liked the character designs and I thought they looked excellent, but what they were lacking was good voice acting. Here you'll just have to read what's on the screen, but when I think back to a title like Hades, the voice acting work there adds so much to the experience and it felt like it would have done the same here. Overall then I give the visuals and performance 14 out of 20 and the audio also scores 14 out of 20. As far as value goes, the game's going to set you back around about £20 or $24.99. And despite the official figure being around 4 hours, I guess if you had a lot of RNG luck, then you could do that. But for me, I had several playthroughs before I could do anywhere near that. And for your average gamer, I'd say it's more like 10 to 15 hours. It's enjoyable and you get more powerful the longer you play. You don't feel like you can never overcome the odds. It's placed itself in the premium category for indie titles. And for the most part, I think it earns that. It has a very striking visual style. They've gone for a very interesting new battle system. But there are a lot of roguelites on Switch. And maybe something more like £15 or even a little bit less would have been the sweet spot. I give value 15 out of 20. Star Renegades is an enjoyable experience with a really clever combat system. Your own skill can massively change the outcome of the game, but I did feel like there was a touch too much RNG in the earlier stages. It scores an overall switch-up score of 75%. Let me know down in the comments, were you a fan of their previous game and purchased this one? Are you enjoying it more than I've said or less or do you agree? And if you enjoy the content then consider sticking around. A big thanks to our patrons, we really do appreciate you. We've got some great reviews coming up next week as well, including games like Commandos. Oh man. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See y'all.